We're going to explore the many left out Easter eggs, theories, and facts in the Super Mario Brothers movie that may have been overlooked or gone unnoticed. Even though Chris Pratt received a ton of backlash for his line, Mushroom Kingdom, Here We Come, in the teaser trailer, Mushroom Kingdom, Here We Come, it is actually taken straight from the Super Mario Adventures comic. Toad refers to Bowser's domain as the Darklands. Your brother has landed in the Darklands. They're under Bowser's control. Which is a reference to the NES game Super Mario Bros. 3, where the final world is called Darkland, and it is where Bowser's castle is located. The lady who appears in the Super Mario plumbing commercial is voiced by Jeannie Elias, who also played the original voice of Princess Toadstool in Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Thank you, Super Mario Bros. It seems like the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. We sure sent Blackbeard Koopa sailing. The Donkey Kong franchise is surprisingly well represented in the movie. In addition to Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong, who both were confirmed in the initial casting announcement, the trailers and posters reveal that Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Funky Kong, Kitty Kong, Swanky Kong, and even Donkey Kong Jr. make appearances in the background of several shots in the trailers. Similar to the Paper Mario series and Mario Land Luigi Superstar Saga, Bowser's castle is depicted as a floating structure with Bowser's head incorporated into its design. The underside of the castle features spiked balls hanging from chains, serving as anchors rather than having the ambiguous purpose seen in Paper Mario for the N64. The URL shown at the end of the Super Mario Bros. plumbing commercial is actually a real website that you can visit on the internet right now. The cartoon versions of Mario and Luigi featured in the Super Mario Bros. plumbing ad uses Yoichi Kotobe's iconic art style, which is also used in the promotional material for the NES games. An animated Mario movie was originally planned to be produced by Sony Pictures. Sony was close to sealing a deal with Nintendo in 2014, with plans for Gennady Tartakovsky to direct and Avi Arad to produce. However, the infamous Sony Pictures breach following the same year not only leaked those plans, but also contributed to the deal falling through and the project being quietly cancelled shortly after. The alleged reason for the film's cancellation is that it is related to the Sony and Nintendo's long-standing rivalry in the gaming industry. This rivalry dates back to the 90s, when Nintendo's rejection of Sony resulted in the development of the first PlayStation. The historical context of this dispute is also thought to have influenced the decision to cancel the film. The phone number displayed on the website is functional. When called, users will receive a voice message from none other than Luigi himself, courtesy of Charlie Day. Thank you for calling Super Mario Brothers Plumbing. It's the man, Luigi. And if you need service, please uh, text us at the same number. You just call 92955-MARIO. That's 92955-2746. Message us about any issues wherever you live. House, condo, mansion. And we'll be sure to text you back right away because it's Super Mario Brothers Plumbing. We don't say let's away. We say let's -a go. Oh, and uh, check our website, smbplumbing.com. We're still working on it, so more updates to come. Bye-bye. There is a customer reviews section, which is a super fun addition. Spike is cool, left a one-star review with the following comment. There is no loyalty with Mario and Luigi. The subpar Mario Brothers used to work for me until they decided to break off and start their own business. They'll learn their lesson someday. Spike's review on the website is not directed towards Super Mario Brothers Plumbing, the company, but towards the Mario Brothers themselves. He accuses the brothers who used to work for him of being unloyal by leaving him to start their own business instead. But wait, what does this mean? Could Spike be the antagonist? In case you're not familiar, Foreman Spike is the boss of the demolition site in the game Wrecking Crew. Mario and Luigi work for him in the game, but Spike always tries to make their job a nightmare. Spike first appeared as a rival character in the bonus stages of the game, where he competed against Mario for coins. Since the announcement of the new Super Mario Bros. movie, the project has been kept really low-key, but new critical information may have been leaked accidentally. During an episode of the Burt cast, Italian comedian and actor Sebastian Maniscalco stated that he was scheduled to record lines for the character Foreman Spike in the movie later that day. What do you got, what do you got the rest of the day? I got, uh, I'm in the movie Super Mario Brothers, an animated movie. So I'm real? playing um, Spike, their boss. Yeah. So I'm going to do that at 12. 
As Maniscalco says, Spike is their boss, which may refer to Mario and Luigi as his employees most presumably. This slip up has us questioning, what is Spike's place in the movie? Leave us a comment and let us know your theory about Spike's role in the movie. Fans can discover a plethora of hidden treasures on the smpplumbing.com. One of the secrets is that visitors can access a hidden wallpaper by clicking on the manhole cover. Then, you'll be prompted to a wallpaper of Bowser and his army positioned for battle, with Kamek by his side. Clicking on the wrench icon causes it to play the GameCube startup jingle. Clicking on the certified super icon causes it to play the power up jingle. Clicking on the as seen on TV icon causes it to play the three, two, one, go jingle from Mario Kart. The film's distributor, Universal, is the same studio that distributed 1989's The Wizard, which extensively included Super Mario Bros. 3 and other Nintendo material in the movie. This showcases that Universal and Nintendo had patched things up after the infamous Donkey Kong lawsuit earlier that decade. To further prove this point, they have also recently partnered up to locate Nintendo's new amusement park in Universal Studios in both Japan and the United States. In another scene, Mario asks Toad if this is a dream. What is this place? The Mushroom Kingdom! So this is not a dream? Ah! That hurt, right? Yes! It's not intentional, but it reminds us of how the events of Super Mario Bros. 2 were revealed to be all a dream. In the movie, there is a scene where Mario trains for his confrontation with Bowser to save Luigi by running through an elaborate obstacle course that's designed to resemble the challenging levels from the classic 2D Super Mario Bros. games. With the announcement of the Super Mario Bros. movie, Nintendo revealed a new Donkey Kong design. The last time we saw a new look for Donkey Kong was in the original Donkey Kong Country game, released on the Super Nintendo back in 1994. According to Miyamoto, the creator of Donkey Kong, the redesign for the movie was intended to give the character a more comedic personality. It is the third feature film adaptation of the series, after the lesser known anime film The Great Mission to Save Princess Peach from 1986, and the infamous live action movie Super Mario Bros. from 1993. Super Mario Brothers, this ain't no game. In a departure from tradition, Charles Martinet, the longtime voice actor for Mario and Luigi in the games, won't be reprising his roles in the upcoming Super Mario Brothers movie. Instead, Chris Pratt and Charlie Day have been cast as the iconic plumber duo. However, Martinet remains involved in the movie, lending his voice to several undisclosed characters. Nintendo is heavily involved in developing this movie together with Illumination, and Shigeru Miyamoto is a producer on the project. In an effort to avoid the same missteps that led to the controversial 1993 live-action film, this ain't no game, which wasn't too well received by fans and critics alike. Oh, hi Pauline. 